Okay, welcome to another how-to video. My name is Dave Davis, a, a CTO of DVS, sponsored by Seagate, the lovely guys at Seagate. Thanks very much for your sponsorship. So today we're going to take a look at the RTSP uh, HTP protocol streams that you can put out into a third-party system. We get asked about this a lot. There's a full document that we can pass you that has this information on there. But I'm going to give you a quick, quick overview via my new 12 megapixel fisheye that we've launched. Uh, so I'm going to go over to the computer and you'll see me there. Cheers. Okay, we're on our PC now. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel where you'll get notified of any further content. Um, make suggestions, we'll answer questions, and you'll get the chance to win the odd occasional prize. So thanks again for everyone who has participated so far. More of that to come this year. So first thing we'll see is this is the document. As you can see, let me just scroll up there. Got a full document available which lists the RTSP HTTP stream structure. So we can scroll up and down through that. I can send that or I'll put it in the attachment to download. And there's two ways of doing it. There's with or without authentication. So you can include the username and password in the stream or you can't and then it will ask you for that later on. So if you're streaming to a third party system, say we're gonna use VLC as an example, I can make it with or without the password in the stream structure. Um, the third party system you're gonna use may or may not have an option to include that um, in the connection details or it may prompt you when you go to connect it. Either way, it will work. So, first thing we're gonna do is open up our device that we wanna pull off. So this is our new, brand new 12 megapixel fisheye. Um, there's a new, new, new one coming as well later on in this year, but this one has got some enhanced features on there, which I'll do another video on, but we will use it as the test subject today. So we'll log in. So what you'll see from this fisheye when it starts, it's in the demo room. Uh, you can see me down there. Um, it's still got the normal software hardware D-Warp. For any of you that are interested in this, um, the new fisheye, click on configuration, new part number, and you'll see heat map configuration. So we've enhanced the heat map configuration. So we've got the different areas. We've also got the minimum and maximum object size and the dwell time and people number option. So you can have dwell time or dwell time and people number and also intersection analysis. Now the intersection analysis allows you to draw an area with the arrows out. So if this is on like a crossroads of um, a store where you've got lots of pods meeting each other in an open area, you can see which area the customers come in and go out of um, by your, your traffic flow. And if you want to see that, you go to application. I go in a little bit off piste here. But under the, uh, so you've got your normal uh, heat map statistics. So then that shows you your dwell time uh, where we have been through the demo room. And then you've got it by value or by image. And then you've got the intersection analysis report. So you've got your four directions in. And if we go daily, you can see there your people counting stuff. So I can enhance each one. There, and you can just select the four areas. So this will have lots of development, lots of future uses for this, but that's uh, a use of the new fisheye. Uh, keep tuned, we'll do a, a specific video on this. So back to the HTTP stream. So if we web browse into our camera, any of the latest cameras or the latest firmware, this very suggested that you go into network, into advanced, into integration protocol, enable the CGI command and change it to digest and basic and click save. That will enable a lot more functionality outside of the Hypervision platform with third party integration. And then under system, security, you've got the RTSP authentication. Change that to digest and basic, and the same with that, and click save. This will definitely improve the functionality. So if we then open up VLC and we'll use uh, this RTSP without authentication structure, so it's RTSP dot hash hash uh, forward slash forward slash IP address, the port number you're using, 
streaming channels you need to put it in exactly like this so if there's a capital letter use a capital letter 101 so it means get the main stream of the first channel 102 is get the substream of the first channel so you can do this via the nvr dvr ipc or encoder so if you go down it always gives you an example so that's if you're pulling it from um the actual uh, dvr itself so you can tell the stream structure so it's nice and easy to follow http commands to get the ipc mjpeg stream so we only support that through the substreams. So you need to log into the camera and change it to MJPEG first. Then you've got the HTTP without authentication, with authentication, and then you've got the snapshot using HTTP URL. So we'll first try this RTSP authentication. So we'll close that. We'll open up VLC. VLC media player. Open that up. Drag that across into our screen so you can see it. Go to media, open network stream, and there we have it. So we've got the RTSP equals 192.168.3.30. So we're going to change that to dot .35 to match our IP camera streaming. Channels 101. Click play. It will prompt me for the username and password. So I will happily put this in. And there you have the stream directly off the fisheye so we can stop that now if i go to media open network stream i can actually change that to 102 so now we're going to pull the substream so much lower quality so that's taking the substream of the camera and there's the stream there so you can pull off the main stream or the substream according to what your requirements with the third party system outside especially if you want to pull it off um to maybe you want to embed it into a website and it's easy for you to pull the rtsp stream off and embed that directly into your website uh, this is what a lot of people do we help them achieve that via this rtsp command so again we can stop that go to media and go to open network stream we'll change that back and click play and now you've got the main stream again so either or it's entirely up to you what we can do also if you don't want to do the authentication you can actually put in there the username semicolon password at ip address so let's just try that so if we go open network stream so we'll go admin Uh, let me just check the form. So it's admin, semicolon password. So it should be that. Yep. Let's give that a go. Whoop. There we go. We're pulling it directly using the username and password embedded into the text. And you can do that via the IP camera, encoder, uh, DVR, NVR, hybrid. It's all exactly the same. You just need to know the details. Okay, so we'll stop that. Again, with the HTTP method, I can open up this. I can open up a HTTP string. And if we look at our document and go to the bottom. So if we want to take a snapshot using the HTTP URL, we can put the HTTP input the IP address, HTTP port number, streaming, channels, one, and picture. So if we look at this, for instance, this command here is the streaming channels 102 HTTP preview, or you can use this one here, for instance. So if we go back to our web browser, you'll probably see there was one earlier where I've got the streaming channels one picture, and there we go. So I've input that command there. It's taken a picture via the HTTP of now, and every time I hit refresh, it will go and get a new picture of that camera. So again, if you want to embed that into a website and use it, so every couple of seconds you're grabbing a frame from the camera to show you know, the, the most recent activity within a camera, whether it's like an NMOT waiting area, could be like a conservation camera, where it could be many, many uses. Um, but you can stream that directly to a website or grab an image um, as often as required and then embed that use it to your very needs hopefully this will help i'm going to put that document back up there so again here's the document i will send it if anyone requires it it's a very 
very easy to follow guide and if you do what we say with the camera if you don't do the first bit where you log into the camera and enable those options you'll find a lot of the vlc will fail it'll say enable to connect to stream um, because of the security options that we're using hopefully you'll find that very interesting and of much great use if you need anything please ask us here at dvs tune in for next week's video where we'll do something uh, completely different thanks again for all the support see, see you next week stay tuned and have a lovely day.